So last time we talked about functors. These are maps between categories. In JavaScript, in, in our examples here, they act on contracts and guarded functions. This one is basically just the map method on arrays. If you give it a contract for, say, int32, then it will apply that contract to each element of the array, and once the array passes this contract, you know that every element of the array is a 32-bit integer. That is, the array you passed in is an array of 32-bit ints. So given a contract, int32, it returns a contract array of int32. On the other hand, if you pass in a guarded function, from say strings to booleans, this will return a guarded function that applies this to each element of the array. And if any element of the array is not a string, it will throw an exception when it hits the input guard on the guarded function you passed in. So assuming they're all strings, then what comes out is all booleans. So this contract, this uh, guarded function, is a guarded function from arrays of strings to arrays of booleans. That's a functor. It applies to both the objects and the morphisms of our category. Let's look at another um, another functor. This one's going to be called the maybe functor. Um, it's also known as option in Scala uh, or the free pointed set functor in uh, category theory. We're going to build up some supporting framework to make this work nicely. First we'll con create a constructor for our data type to inherit from. There's one instance. It creates an object with no properties, but we say none.prototype is object.create maybe dot prototype. So now any instance of none will also be an instance of maybe. Um, let's give it a nice two-string. And we'll also create a handy instance of it. Now, the other possibility for a maybe is a sum. It says it's just a wrapper around the value provided. Sum.prototype equals project create maybe prototype. Oops. So this is also going to test as an instance of a maybe. I'm going to give it a nice two string as well. And we'll also give a helper function it means we don't have to type new all the time. Now we can write our functor. Inspect a contract. Returns a contract. 
contract expects a value that I'll call M because this is going to be very much like the array of here. Array of was map. And so maybe is also going to be a lot like map. Sum here, uh, there it is, sum is simply a wrapper around a single object. Now if we had a one element array, that would be in some sense a wrapper around a single object, and if we applied the map function to that one element array, we'd expect the function to be applied to the thing that was wrapped in brackets. And so this is going to behave the same way. It's going to be a map method that applies to the single wrapped value. So I'm going to write that up here. If m instance of none turn m else if m instance of sum, here's where we do the mapping. We turn sum c, there we apply the, the function to m.x, the thing being contained. And if we get something that isn't a non arrest sum, throw new exception. type error, expected, none, or sum. There we go. And that is our contract that we're returning. It's based on C. So whereas, um, if we think of an array that could be either zero elements or one element long. If it's zero elements long, when you map something over it, well, you just get back a zero element array. That's very much like this none constructor. If, on the other hand, it has one element, then we apply it to that single element and wrap it up again. So we get an array with a single value that is the output of the provided function. So both of these we can understand as special cases of map. Now what can we do with a maybe? Uh, well, let's define our repeat function again. Let's see if we got it up here. Let me just, there it is. So repeat takes in a string and produces that string concatenated with itself. So if we say maybe none, uh, oh sorry, maybe repeat of none, we're thinking of this as mapping the repeat function over the zero element array. And that, of course, is going to give us none. So console.log this thing. We're good to go. And point spits out this thing none. Uh, the console is smart, so it prints out that it's an instance of none. But if I do this, then it'll convert it to a string for us. And it invokes the two string. should have invoked the two string. Well, did something wrong with that. What about two string? As a function that turns quote one. Ah, we got the prototype. Yeah, 
I got it down there. So, try it again. There we go. Great. So, clean that up and. Okay. So, when we print this out, we get none. On the other hand, if we have in here some value, since repeat expects a string, maybe repeat expects a maybe string. It's either none or some string. And if we run it, we get unexpected. Ah, extra close bread. There we go. Run. Some Jojo. So it repeated this. That means we can use maybe as a kind of alternative to throwing an exception. We simply compose all the functions. We don't need to wrap everything in a big trite catch because if it ever returns none, well, the next thing that we're mapping over it, maybe repeat, um, can handle a none. We can also, when it comes time to distinguish the behavior based on whether it returns none or some, we can do this same kind of instance of matching and take two different possible routes. Um, in fact, that suggests maybe dot prototype dot get or else function um, takes in a value x and says if this instance of sum return this dot x, get out the wrapped value. Else return the one that was passed in. So now we can say cast that to a string because get or else is going to return a string. So given some value, it returns that value. Oh sorry, this I guess this value is some JoJo, so it pulls it out. And if on the other hand we had none Well, maybe repeat of none is also none, so we get J as our other option.